Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I'm going to show you how you can set up a local Kafka environment and then actually start running uh, some Kafka pipelines for doing some live st uh, event streaming. So really just kind of pure viewer request video here that I thought would be useful to a lot of people um, because having a local environment with Kafka is much easier and much cheaper than having to provision it from a cloud provider and it also just kind of gives you an easier way to customize all the fun networking things that go typically go into Kafka uh, because Kafka on its own isn't really doing a lot but mainly if you're using it to monitor uh, events. So having a lot of control over the underlying networking fundamentals is important so you don't get kind of run into any just like annoying hiccups that wouldn't exist if you're just running it locally. Um, so without further ado, going to go to the download Kafka link um, and at this point switch over into my VS Code environment and show you how to download and get started. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is open up Terminal and then navigate to where I just downloaded the Kafka release to. So I've just put it in a new folder called Kafka examples. So ls, now you can see, we just have this Kafka environment. So you'll download it, move it into whatever folder, and then next step will be unpacking it. So run tire and one second. So apologies, I very stupidly left in the full command instead of just adjusting it so it's not. So make sure that you just have this Kafka dash then whatever version uh, equivalent to whatever the package you downloaded is. And let me just ls this again. And there we go, we add SRC. And there we go, now we're cooking with gas. So now you'll have this directory over here on the left which is your Kafka directory so it'll have everything you need to actually get started with a local Kafka environment. So let's CD into that. So CD Kafka 3.7 source, And then we can either start it using Zookeeper or KREP. So what I'm gonna do here is I just ran docker pull Apache slash Kafka 3.7 and we're gonna pull the Docker image that we're gonna use for our Kafka environment. Um, and so once we pull that image, then we'll run a command to actually start it on port 9092. So here, clear this, and then put the command in clear, docker run, port 9092, and this will be launching our Kafka cluster. And if everything goes successfully, we should see a Kafka database spin up in a second. So I'll just pausing that, and here we go. So here is, it's called Priceless Thompson. Not sure what name convention they're using here, but that's what it's called. Um, and we have this now running on port 9092. So what we want to do now is, well, this is starting. Um, I'll pause the video for a second and then just go 92. So yeah, this is going to take a second to spin up. So I'll catch you back once it's all set up. So I actually forgot that uh, Kafka doesn't have a fancy UI like I'm, like I'm used to. So what we'll actually need to do to get started is create a new terminal environment um, and then create a topic to store our events in. So this is going to be an event stream that uh, it's going to, so imagine this topic is listening to an event. So like the generation of data from an IoT device and then this topic uh, is going to basically store and essentially acts as a folder for each event within that uh, file stream. So almost, I guess the analogy is it's a tracker for every event that's happened within that file stream stored under you know a database of, of the topic. So each table of all, in it. so think about a topic as a table and every entry within that table is a data point that was produced by whatever the Kafka stream is listening to. So here what we're gonna do is execute a terminal command. I'm gonna actually just frame my screen better. Uh, that will bootstrap a ser or server for our topic that we're going to use to listen to an event. Um, so here, class path is empty, so one second. So the reason why I just got hung up there is I actually forgot that you need to have a Java installed. So what I did is just brew install Java because I'm on a Mac. And then you're gonna run this grad, dot slash gradlu p scala version to initialize the uh, scala, the project, uh, the Gradle wrapper script, which is going to spin up, compile all the Java components of this topic. Um, so I'm going to give it a second to finish spinning up, and then we'll go right back to our regular scheduled programming. So now once Gradle is done, we can actually create our topic. So here, 
Kafka topics. And now we're going to allow Java to do this. So one more second. And boom. So now we have our topic quick start events already exist. So it failed the second time because we'd actually already created it. So now that we have our broker that's already set up, let's also I just want to show you some other things you can do here. Uh, so you can also show, let's say, the partition details of a new topic. So if we want to describe this, you can see we have zero partitions, zero replicas, because uh, we haven't put anything into this yet. So next, let's write some events into this topic. Um, you know, client or Kafka clients communicate with Kafka brokers via the network for writing or reading events. So what we're going to do is kind of just act as a Kafka client that's going to produce a few events. Um, so here, what we'll do is run uh, this command, console producer, and this will have us act as a console producer. And then what we can do is just insert events into our uh, topic by just typing in here. So anything you insert into this third event, maybe a fourth event, each of these line entries uh, basically exist as a new event for our topic. So we're just mimicking a producer. Um, we're going to just like mimic any service that would be emitting information. So really easy way to test things uh, using this program if you're just trying to test a topic. Um, then what we will do is run our consumer client event to actually read the events that we just created. So next, well, let me actually just clear the screen to get it a little bit um, set up. So here, what this is going to do is now read the events that we just created. So you can see here, within this topic, we have four events that were created, first event, second event, third event, fourth event. Um, and so now if you want to switch back to your producer terminal, you can just type in events there, write additional events. And actually what we can do here is let's just run, so cd into Kafka, and then let's actually run the producer. So I'll show you this, uh, how you can just kind of watch it happen live. So. I run this producer, hey, and then you'll see this show up immediately here uh, under the consumer. So pretty cool, just you know, linking these producer uh, consumers via this Kafka network all on your local machine. Um, it's relatively easy to do. So now, how you know this is a fun little example, but how do we actually import and export data as streams of events with Kafka Connect? So Kafka Connects allows you to continuously stream data from external systems into Kafka and vice versa. And it uses connectors, which implement custom logic for each uh, for the interactions with specific external systems. So Snowflake Connector has specific code uh, that's dedicated to understanding you know, how Snowflake works um, and so on and so forth, just how connectors work in any kind of uh, SaaS offering. So what we'll do now is I'm just gonna show you how to run Kafka Connect with simple connectors to just import data from a file into a Kafka topic and export data from a Kafka topic to a file. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do to get set up here is actually go into our config folder here um, and open the connect standalone properties uh, file. This will allow us to uh, define the connection for how we're going to uh, and use a specific uh, connect file uh, connector, so I'm saying connect so much, but it's just how I'll describe these things, um, that will essentially just allow us to uh, read data from a file as if it were you know, some data that I just entered there in my producer uh, client. So what we'll do here, we open up our standalone properties and we'll add the path uh, to the connect file jar. So this is, the jar file is the connector. It's the uh, piece or the file that contains the code that allows us to actually connect to a local file. Um, so what we'll do is save that. Um, and then go back into our terminal, control C out of this, and then we'll use this command, just double check, echo, awesome. So here, plug in path. Um, and then what we'll do is start creating some C data to actually test with it. So here, foo and bar test.txt. Um, and so what this will do is essentially just creating a file and then writing uh, foo and bar. So if you're a marine uh, guy, you might know, and then you can see here immediately showing up in this test.txt file right here. Um, so then what we'll do is actually connect this file and read the events from it. Um, so I'll let that terminal a little bit bigger here, clear it out, and instantiate our connectors within Kafka. So here, uh, what we're doing, you'll just see a bunch of different commands here of it installing and instantiating all of our different 
uh, workers and to our Kafka environment. Now, if everything goes successfully, you'll see this new test sync uh, .text file that, that we just used the event stream to actually connect to and store uh, the, or Kafka Connect to connect these two files using different connectors uh, because we're just connecting the file. So it's effectively the same connector uh, and just writing the contents of that file to a separate uh, text.sync.txt file. So you can see here, same order, just literally writing it. Um, so just showing you how you can move data between two different systems using Kafka. Now, you also might be wondering, how can I process my events with uh, Kafka streams? And so that's what I'm here to show you next. Um, so to once you've got your data stored in, uh, process in Kafka as an event, you can then run the Kafka streams client library that will allow you to actually uh, perform operations on an event. And so you'll, what you'll need to do that, you won't actually just copy them into a Python file, but instead, so if you go, you'll need to go to a Java file. Um, so if you go into the quick start folder underneath your Kafka uh, directory, you'll see you have this word count Java file. Um, and so this is a file written in Java uh, that essentially will process the words uh, emitted within a single stream. Um, so this is basically the meat and potatoes of how you're actually gonna do your processing within Kafka is through these Java files where you're going to define a stream that says, hey, attach this function to a topic uh, and then say, hey, anytime that a word is emitted, take that word, pipe it through this process, uh, and then store, you know, store that transformed word in a backend database of sorts. Um, and so that's really it. And so actually getting into like the details of how exactly the script works, and you can see kind of the general idea um, will be a topic for a later video or it'll add on another good 20 minutes to this video. I just want this to be a quick start of how to actually just get started using Kafka. Um, and then future videos, if, these, uh, if you guys want to see it, let me know in the comments below. I can go deeper into actually, you know, hey, how do these Kafka pipelines work? How do you build your own? What's the logic behind it? Um, and get into all the nitty gritty details. So let me know if that's something you'd like to see. I hope this is helpful for the people that just wanted to get an idea of how to quickly get started with Kafka on their local machines. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.